Because atoms are very small, we need a way to handle large amounts of them in the lab. The way that we do this is we use a number called the mole. This allows us to convert the mass of elements into the number of atoms in a sample. The number of atoms that are contained in a mole are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a counting number just like a dozen or a gross. If you have a mole of basketballs, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd basketballs. If we have a mole of copper atoms, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms, which is approximately what is contained in 22 pennies. A mole is a very large number. If we did have a mole of basketballs, it would take up the space of approximately the entire Earth. Let's calculate the number of atoms in 2.45 moles of copper. We are given 2.45 moles and we're trying to find the number of atoms. So we're going to take our moles and convert to atoms. Now, a strange thing in chemistry is that we take a four letter word and abbreviate it to three. So moles, M-O-L-E, is abbreviated M-O-L. We can set up our problem, 2.54 moles. We want the moles to cancel. We know that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to 23rd things in this case atoms. So one mole we want on the bottom, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms goes on top. We can solve this problem and see that we get 1.48 times 10 to the 24th atoms of copper. We would expect our number to be larger than a mole because we had more than one mole. Here's a problem for you to try. Pause the video and calculate the number of moles of silver in a ring that contains 1.1 times 10 to the 22nd silver atoms. We're going to start with our 1.1 times 10 to the 22nd silver, which is AG. We're going to use the relationship that one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things, in this case silver atoms. Our silver atoms are going to cancel. We be, will be left with moles. Now when we look at sig significant figures, we started with two significant figures, so our answer should be reported with two significant figures. Now because the number we started with was less than one mole, our answer should be less than one, and this makes sense. Now you might ask yourself, why is a mole 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd? That seems like a weird number. The reason is because 
we define it as the number of particles in exactly 12 grams of carbon 12. This allows us to say that 12 AMUs of carbon 12 is one atom and 12 grams of carbon 12 is one mole. This allows the number on the periodic table for the mass to represent either atomic mass units or grams. We call this number Avogadro's number because he was the scientist that first hypothesized and found the amount of one mole. Now you might ask yourself why on the periodic table does the mass say 12.01 grams when we just said that we defined it to be 12 grams? Well, that's because carbon does not only exist as carbon 12, but we also have carbon 13 and carbon 14. If we average all of those masses, we come up with 12.01. This should show you that carbon 12 is by far the most abundant isotope. When we talked about the mass on the periodic table before, we called it the atomic mass the mass of one atom. Well, when we're talking about moles, the mass of one mole, then we call it the molar mass. And it is equal to the mass in grams to the element's atomic mass in AMUs. So that number on the periodic table remains the same whether we're talking about grams or AMUs. This means that not all elements have the same mass. So the lighter the atom, the less one mole of that atom weighs. So the higher we are on the periodic table, the less mass each element has. Now that relationship between AMUs and moles is Avogadro's number, the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So if we look, we can look at different elements and they have different masses. You'll notice hydrogen is the lightest at just over one AMU or one gram per mole. And as we move down the periodic table, the masses get larger and larger. If we look at carbon, which we've already talked about, one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams. One atom of carbon is 12.01 AMUs. If we look at sulfur, one mole of sulfur is 32.06 grams. One atom of sulfur is 32.06 AMUs. The reason this is important is it allows us to measure quantities that we can use in the lab. So if we want to calculate how many moles of carbon are in 0.0265 grams of, car of pencil lead, we can calculate the number of moles. When we get to doing chemical reactions, the moles have to be in a ratio in order for our chemical reaction to happen. This is going to be called stoichiometry. So let's do our calculation. We know that we have 0.0265 grams of carbon. We want to find the moles. So we're going to go from grams to moles using our molar mass off the periodic table. So our relationship looking at the periodic table is one mole is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon. We want our grams to cancel, so I'm going to put the 12.01 grams on the bottom, one mole of carbon on top, and we can calculate the 
the moles of carbon that we have, 2.21 times 10 to the negative third moles of carbon. Now this number makes sense because our grams are much less than one mole weighs, and so we would expect the moles of carbon to be less than one. Here's a practice for you to try. Pause the video, calculate the moles of sulfur in 57.8 grams of sulfur. We would look, you start with our 57.8 grams of sulfur. We would use a periodic table. Look for sulfur on the periodic table and find its molar mass. Now these problems can be a little tricky because it seems like you don't have enough information. But remember, the periodic table has a very large amount of information that we can use to solve our problems. So we end up multiply across the top, divide by anything on the bottom. We end up with 1.80 moles of sulfur. So 57.8 is larger than 32. We'd expect to end up with a value larger than 1. We can start to string our conversions together. So if we want to figure out the number of atoms that are in a penny, we can use Avogadro's number. So we're given that our penny weighs 3.10 grams. We want to find the atoms of copper. So we're going to go from grams to moles, from moles to atoms. Now you only use Avogadro's number if you're trying to find atoms or molecules. The vast majority of the time, we're going to find, use the molar mass off the periodic table to find moles. Or if we're given moles, we'll use molar mass to find grams. So we know one mole of copper is equal to 63.55 grams of copper. They find this off the periodic table. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. We start with our 3.10 grams for our problem. We want our grams to cancel. So the 63.55 grams goes on the bottom. One mole of copper goes on top. Our grams are going to cancel. Now we want moles to cancel, so one mole goes on the bottom. Avogadro's number goes on top. Moles cancel. We'll be left with atoms. So because we're given much less than one mole of copper, it makes sense that our value is going to be less than Avogadro's number. Here's a practice for you. Pause the video. See if you can calculate how many aluminum atoms are in a can weighing 16.2 grams. Again, we're going to start with our grams, go to moles, and then from moles to atoms. 16.2 grams. We want our grams to cancel, and we're going to use the molar mass that we find off the periodic table. We want our moles to cancel, and we're going to use Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number goes on top. 
one mole goes on the bottom. We end up with 3.62 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. So this number makes sense because we have less than one mole of aluminum, so we end up with a number smaller than Avogadro's number. Here are some suggested problems for you at the end of the chapter. These are the same ones that I showed you at the beginning of this chapter, but these will give you an idea if you understand the concepts. Please note that moles are an extremely important concept going forward in this class. So please make sure that you understand how to calculate moles.